Next, uh, Deloitte is presenting the executive summary of the 2016 Deloitte NASIO Cybersecurity Study. Russell Jones is presenting. He's a partner with Deloitte Cybersecurity Risk Services, and he's a national leader of their medical IoT cyber offering and part of the leadership of Deloitte State of California account team. Please welcome uh, Russell Jones. Thanks, Russ. Okay, so I'm going to very quickly go through some of the highlights of the uh, fourth one of the cybersecurity studies we've done in collaboration with NASIO. All right, so this is the fourth year, and um, this year is pretty interesting because now we're starting to get some trend data. Notice also that the years line up with the giants, and so hopefully 2016, we're still in the hunt, and uh, I'm hoping we're going to get there. Anyway. 49 out of 50 states participated. Uh, we talked to the uh, study, the questions were answered by 49 state level CISOs, as well as a number of agency and department leaders, so we could get also a business perspective to the actual questions. And really there's three key takeaways I'm gonna talk about. First is that, and you probably heard this as a common theme throughout yesterday's sessions, and, and somewhat today. First big takeaway from the study is there's growing level of awareness at the governor level and legislature level actually around cybersecurity. Second big takeaway is that cybersecurity is becoming more of the fabric of government operations. And then the third big takeaway is that where formal strategies have been put in place around cybersecurity, it is leading to increased funding and resources, right? So if we get into the details, so governor level awareness is, is on the rise regarding cyber. And as you can see from this question, you know, how often is cybersecurity presented or discussed at agency, office, executive leadership meetings? You can see it's growing from a monthly perspective between our 2014 survey and 2016. And you can also see that it's, um, if we go to the next slide, to what extent are you required to report cybersecurity status um, to the governor level. And as you can see here, it's growing you know, pretty significantly monthly. 29% of the respondents are doing it monthly now, as opposed to uh, in 2014, it was only 17%. And then you can also see that there's still quite a bit of ad hoc reporting, but this is good news. Similarly, same question, state legislature level, you can see in 2014, no one was reporting cyber to the state legislature. Now we've got 4% of the respondents that are reporting it monthly. And then annually, 29%, and then still there's a, a, quite a bit of ad hoc. So this is all good news, right? Because the more the governor's office understands cyber, what the impacts are to citizens and online services and critical infrastructure and the like, probably gonna help your case as a state CISO to try to get more funding, more resources, you know, more attention, right? But the work's not done. As you can see from this particular question, we always ask the state CISO, how do they feel about the posture of the state from a cybersecurity perspective? And then we ask the business leaders, right? You know, your agency, uh, department leaders, what their feeling is about the security posture of the state, their particular department program. And you can see there's a pretty big gap, right? So if you talk to the business leaders of the state, they're feeling much better about the state's ability to uh, you know, detect and protect and respond and recover from cyber security incidents, whereas the state CISOs aren't feeling so good, right? So that says that there's room for improvement in terms of that communication to the legislature, to the governor's office about the challenges for cybersecurity for the state and then what you need to overcome those challenges in terms of you know, resources, funding, partnerships and collaborations, et cetera. All the things that you've been hearing about over the course of the conference. All right, second big takeaway is that cybersecurity is becoming more part of the fabric of gov government operations, right? So what we asked all the state CISOs that participated is you know, what are kind of the, the core functions of your state, you know, your CISO and your Office of Information Security. And as you can see, the top ones are strategy and planning, awareness and training, 
audit log and security event monitoring, incident management and vulnerability management, right? So that is a common theme for sure uh, across, you know, the, the 50 states. Much more focused now on being able to better log and monitor and create security operations centers. And as here in California, creating a security, a cybersecurity integration center that gives better visibility across the departments and the agencies, uh, third party business partners and the like. And if you have better visibility and ability to detect, then that's gonna feed into your ability to respond and recover to the incidents that are going to happen. Then the top five cybersecurity initiatives that came back from the survey, you can see 37% monitoring and security operations centers. And you know, there's all kind of projects going on out there to design, build, you know, de you know, deploy, and then operate these security operations centers across the US. But training and awareness, right? That's a huge component. If you are uh, anointed to be a, an ISO or a chief information security officer known security, it's a constant learning curve, right? So you've got to continue to get that education and training and awareness about the changing cyber threat landscape in order to kind of be proactive and be able to stay ahead of the curve. 29% um, are focused on strategy, and I'll talk about that in our next finding. And then you can see 29% uh, for governance and then 29% for operationalizing cybersecurity. Collaboration also is a huge trend, right, across the board. So we're seeing much more activity, and you can see by the numbers here, in terms of uh, participation in like the multi-stake ISAC, uh, coordination with the Department of Homeland Security, and you, you heard from a gentleman yesterday um, that you're a representative here for California. Local government, state colleges, universities, and National Guard, and here in, in California, the military department. So that collaboration, obviously, is growing and it's going to be really important to try to you know, address the cyber risk that we're talking about across the public sector. And then uh, CISO's confidence in cybersecurity practices followed by third parties like contractors, consultants and the likes and you can see it's not pretty good. Not very confident or somewhat confident was the response which is a little bit better than 2014 but it's, it's, a, it's a concern, right? it's an issue. So, you know, kind of the key thing here is effective collaboration across agencies, legislatures, federal partners, uh, et cetera, is gonna be key in managing cyber risk for the state. Last big takeaway, and this one is important. Formal strategy can lead to more resources. So, top five barriers that came back from the survey, and this shouldn't be anything revelational, you know, 80% said lack of sufficient funding. And then 51% said inadequate availability of cybersecurity professionals. And you probably heard that as a common theme over the last couple of days. Security talent's hard to find out there. In the public sector, um, it's additional challenges in terms of um, just being able to compete against the private sector, right? Uh, security resources are getting sucked up by large organizations you've heard of, like Google and Facebook and Apple, that can go play ridiculous salaries, right? So there's got to be some other way to get the talent into the public sector, into the states. And some of those ways that we at least heard coming back from survey participants, you know, if you look at millennials, you know, they have different motivations, right? It's not all about money for them. They, they want to seek a cause. They want to see uh, some, you know, change, something around, around improving the environment, social justice, those type of things. So there are other ways to kind of get that talent into the state. But really the point here, when you look at the, the barriers, the point is the states that are putting, and the CISOs that are focusing on a formal strategy on how they're going to address cyber security and cyber risk for the state, they're having much more success in getting the funding and the people that they're asking for than the states that aren't. And I go back to the, the original finding about awareness at the governor level is on the rise. When you have that formal strategy, you can get an audience with agency leaders and the governor's office and the legislature and to be able to effectively communicate not just the problems, but here's the way forward that we're going to address cybersecurity and cyber risk in the state. So you can see the numbers, but 33 states that had a formal documented strategy had 15 or more dedicated FTEs as part of their uh, Office of Information Security. Um, 16 of them had staff that had the required competencies, expertise. 16 had an increase in budget. 
10 of those states had a budget of more than 2% of the overall IT budget, and then 12 had alignment of their cyber program with the business programs. Versus if you look at the bottom, you can see that the ones that didn't have a, a formally documented cyber security strategy had much less of those things in terms of people, resources, alignment with the business, et cetera. Last slide, emerging trends. This won't be anything revelational either, but social engineering, ransomware, and, and phishing farming, other related variants, those are the top concerns and those are the top trends that we see across the public sector that state level CISOs and their departments um, are trying to address. And you know, ransomware is a, is a pretty huge issue. You've heard some of the earlier stories. Um, and when you think about security, you no know, security folks, we typically focus on, if you think about the, the triangle, right? Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The vast focus is on confidentiality. All the breach notification laws, all the focus is on confidentiality. When you start thinking about Internet of Things, systems that control uh, whether it's medical devices or dams or physical you know, systems and processes, integrity and availability becomes a big deal. And so in that case, you can have a, when you do your risk assessment, a system that has very low risk from a confidentiality perspective and everybody's feeling good. Hey, I won't end up in the paper because we were probably pretty well protected against a breach. But then if you look at integrity and availability of that system and the fact that it might be a life-sustaining system or it might control you know, a physical structure, dam, or, you know, or whatever, then you have a much different situation in terms of have you really addressed the risk, right? So that's the study. In a, in a nutshell, we've got some of them at our booth out there. And then I think in this presentation earlier, there's a link to be able to go get, get the study. Thanks a lot. Have a good conference. Thank you, Russell.